It's been three years uh, since CEOs first confronted the challenge of the COVID-19 pandemic. Crash Landing, the inside story of how the world's biggest companies survived an economy on the brink, is one of the first accounts to detail how the crisis changed the way they lead. Uh, and joining us now first on CNBC is the author of the new book, Liz Hoffman. She's also the business and finance editor at Semaphore. It just thinking about it, Liz, I immediately thought like, it's like a daunting task. And I said, I think I might ask Chet GPT just to put something together. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, it, but you did not do that. I didn't. Then, I, it was not available to short me. Short <laughs> of talking to all 500 S&P CEOs, how do you come up with similar things that they had? For example, Doug Parker, you point out. OK, so he's got an airline. Uh, media executives, we had to immediately scramble and figure out how to do iPads in our home to stay on the air when you couldn't go. Every company seems like it was faced with its own unique challenges. Did you, were you able to find similarities? Yeah, I think, I mean, I wanted to make sure that I sort of captured the, the scope of the economy, as you point out. Airlines was an obvious story. Uh, I, I told the story of Hilton and, and uh, Airbnb, right, a Silicon Valley upstart trying to disrupt that industry. Ford, I thought, had an incredibly compelling story, you know, incredibly over leveraged coming into this, uh, really had an existential threat to their business. Uh, and also pivoted and turned these factories into ventilator and mask uh, assembly lines. So, I mean, and then, of course, the Wall Street story, too, though. I was struck. I think I, when I thought going in, I thought it would be much more a financial sector story than it ultimately turned out to be. I was surprised at how well the markets held up, ultimately, and ended up being much more a story about the real economy. It, it didn't just hold up. It's like technology was, we got five years' worth of growth uh, in, in, in a year or, or in a year and a half. It was bizarre. I, some of the things that happened, I guess you'd have to be pretty smart to have predicted uh, the way things played out. But, but we had nothing like this except maybe, I mean, it's a 100-year plague, basically. We had 9-11. That shut down airlines, shut down travel, shut down hotels, shut down a, a, a sort of a, a, a tenth of the things that this shut down. But, but we did, they did have some experience in, in that scenario, that black swan. I think there's a piece of 9-11 in this, which is that they, it was a fear event. People were afraid, um, which was not so much the case in 2008. People were mad in 2008, but I don't think they were afraid. But then you had just the, the fundamental economic shock of 2008 and combined in a way that we've certainly never seen, as you point out. Uh, the last one of these was 100 years ago, and the modern economy bears basically no resemblance to the economy in, in 1918 in terms of how global it is, how interconnected it is, how fragile it is, how, uh, how fast it moves. Um, yeah. And so no real, uh, no real playbook on the shelf. That said, I think a lot of credit goes to um, the response of governments here. They did in about six, eight weeks, if you remember, in March and April of 2020, what it took them six, eight, nine months to do in 2008, what they never did in 1929, 1987, previous crashes. So I guess if there's a silver lining, it's that we are getting better at this. Yeah.